Before deploying the model to our target system, it's a good idea to test with the test set we set aside at the beginning. Open your project in Edge Impulse and head to Model Testing. Click the checkbox next to Sample Name to select all of the samples and click Classify Selected. Wait for a moment and each of these samples should be classified by the model. If the predicted label does not match the ground truth label, they will be highlighted in red. If you performed the motions the exact same way every time, you'll likely have a pretty good classifier at or near 100% accuracy. If your test set accuracy is a lot lower than your training or validation set accuracy, it likely means your model was overfit during training. You will want to try training again or employing some of the overfitting reduction techniques we talked about. Next, let's try live classification, so head to that page. On your phone, head to smartphone.edgeimpulse.com again, and it should connect to your project. Make sure that your phone has connected and click Start Sampling. When the sampling process starts, try moving your phone left to right for a few seconds, then move it up and down, then in a circle. And finally, let it rest for the last few seconds of the test. When it's done, you should see a plot of the raw accelerometer data over the 10 seconds. Drag the window to the left to right section and take a look at the predictions. The system should be very sure that you are performing the left to right motion as indicated by the left right label having the highest probability. Next, move the window to the up down section and similarly, you should see that the model predicted up down. Repeat for the circle to verify that it's correctly predicting the circle label and do it once more for the idle section. If you put the window over a a transition period, say from left right to up down, you can see that the model struggles to recognize that gesture. Predictions marked in red indicate that the model is not really sure about the label. Note that you can do this same process with the Arduino board connected to the Edge Impulse daemon just like we did for data capture. We can perform a live test on our phone. On the data capture screen, press the switch to live classification mode button. Here the phone will begin to sample for two seconds classify the gesture, and repeat the process. First, try moving the phone left to right. The probability of each label will appear in a list below the sampling graphic. Left to right should be close to 1, meaning that the model is predicting that it's the most likely gesture we are performing. Try again with the up and down motion. Again, we should see something close to 1 appear under that label. Try the circle motion and look at the output. Finally, try holding the phone in your hand or placing it on a table to see if it predicts the idle label. Note that this is all running as a mixture of JavaScript and WebAssembly locally on our phone. It's not going to the Edge Impulse servers like before. We won't get into browser app development in this course, but know that you can download the trained model and Edge Impulse library wrapped into a WebAssembly file. On the Edge Impulse docs page, you can see how to test the WebAssembly from Node.js as well as hosting a web server that sends it to your phone's browser. How to use the WebAssembly library will vary from browser to browser, which is why we won't cover it in this course. You can also download the trained TensorFlow Lite model to use directly with TensorFlow Lite on your phone. If you head to tensorflow.org slash lite, you can see how to use TensorFlow Lite in native phone applications. However, remember that this file does not contain the feature extraction code, so you would need to write that yourself. Rather than spend time on mobile development in this course, I'd rather use the phone for demo purposes and dive into microcontroller code, which we'll do in the next lecture.